Hi folks, it's Francis here. So it's been quite a while since I released my first and last video introducing the Boral package, and over these past two years a lot of things have changed. For example, back then I was a lowly PhD student who knew absolutely nothing about statistics based at UNSW. And now I'm a lowly postdoc fellow who still knows absolutely nothing about statistics. But hey, at least I'm now based at the Australian National University in Canberra. Canberra of course being the action capital of Australia with adrenaline pumping activities such as the National Museum, National Gallery, National Portrait Gallery, Parliament House, Old Parliament House, and taking your dog for a stroll around Lake Burley Griffin. Hmm. Otherwise, aside from moving locations, I've been busy with, a uh, 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 busy with, um, uh, 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 work. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Work. Uh, I've been hard at work. So I guess aside from my action-packed life, I've also been making quite a lot of changes to borrow over the past two years. In the first video I made, we were at version 0.6, and now just last week, I finally released version 1.0 on CRAN. And so I thought, what better way to thank my nine YouTube subscribers, as well as all the folks out there who have had a go at building models with Borrel, than to release a new video about the major changes that have been made over the past two years. But before I get into the details of some of these changes, there's two points I want to make to begin. Number one, I'm only going to be talking about some of the major changes that have been made to Borrel over the past two years. There have also been dozens of minor tweaks and tinks here and there, but let's face it, there are better things to do with your time than listen to me drone on for 30 minutes about all this minor stuff. So only the major stuff. Number two, I'm not going to go into any of the nitty gritty detail on each of the major changes, because again, you know, better things to do with your life. Besides, if you want details, then please read the help file corresponding to the function you're interested in. I should also point out that there is now a Methods in Ecology and Evolution software paper on Borel, which you can of course read before bedtime and also cite in your work if you're using Borel. And so without further ado, here are some of the major changes that are made to Borel over the past two years. Number one, syntax change. As of Borel 1.0, some of the way arguments utilized in the main Borel function have changed. In particular, stuff related to MCMC iterations is now nested or nested in an MCMC dot control argument, and similarly, stuff related to prior distributions is now nested in a prior dot control argument. If you've used Borel before, then you'll likely find this change annoying, and I do apologize. However, I've done this so that it's now consistent with many other regression functions in R, like GLM, GAM, and GLMER plus some OCD with regards to these things. Number two, changes to defaults. Related to point one is the fact that some of the default settings in the main borrow function have been altered. The default number of MCMC iterations has been bumped up slightly, and the hyperparameters now are now smaller than those used in version 0 0.6, such, such that the default priors now used are slightly more informative than what they used to be. I can't really give a theoretical justification as to why I made these changes, it's just based on personal experience with using Borel, as well as feedback from experts who've used Borel, as well as fitted similar models over the past two years. So I guess you could say that uh, I've used data to update my Borel prior. Uh, 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 yeah. Number three, traits. Yes, you can now include traits in Borel. Specifically, Borel offers a model-based approach to tackling the fourth corner problem, to see if traits mediate species environmental response. The details and examples of this can be found in the Methods in Ecology and Evolution paper. But in brief, what Borel does is treat the species-specific coefficients as random effects, and draws them from a normal distribution with a mean that is a linear function of the traits. In other words, it's kind of like fitting a linear model, with species-specific coefficients as the responses, or response values, and trait values as the predictors. Number 4. Biplots. Whereas in version 0.6 only plots of the site ordinations were constructed, you can now construct model-based biplots in Borel, which jointly plot site ordinations and their corresponding species loadings. There is a little bit of tinkering to play with on the scaling, but in principle, such model-based biplots should allow users to visualize the main differences in community composition between sites, as well as the indicator species characterizing some of the sites. Number five. Thanks to Bob Ahara, who is an awesome ecologist slash statistician slash just awesome cat, uh, there is now a COFs function that allows users to straightforwardly construct caterpillar plots for point estimates and credible intervals for the species coefficients. The function is by no means perfect, but it's a start to at least graphically identify the significant species. Of course, you can still access the point estimates and the HPD intervals themselves from the fitted model. For example, fit dollar sign x dot coefs dot median and so on. Number six, priors. After some feedback from users, the range of prior distributions in Borel has now been expanded, slightly. So far, all versions of Borel have used normal priors for stuff like regression coefficients and uniform priors for things like standard deviations and over-dispersion parameters. 
Now in version or in borrow version 1.0, normal, uniform, and Cauchy priors are available for regression coefficients, and uniform, half normal, and half Cauchy priors for standard deviations and over dispersion parameters. Depending on your choice of pipe params, these new priors are sometimes referred to as weakly informative priors. And you can find some references to the use of such priors in the help file for the main borrow function. Again, I admit that the addition of these new priors is by no means perfect, but it's a start. Hopefully. And number seven, variation or covariation explained. This is still an open statistical problem, but there is now a half-baked solution to trying to identify or trying to quantify the amount of species covariation explained by one or more x variables. Basically, for models with latent variables included, i.e. num.lv greater than zero, the get.residual.core function now returns an estimate of the trace of the residual covariance matrix. And differences in the trace between models with different numbers of x variables should, in principle, be an indication of how much covariation is explained by the new x variables. Again, please read the methods in Ecology and Evolution paper for an example. And please also proceed with caution on using this uh, trace. It's not perfect, but honestly, I don't know of an ideal R squared type number for such models at this point. All right, folks. So that was a brief list stating some of the major changes made to borrow over the past two years. As mentioned at the beginning, there are also many minor changes, and you will find these, well, when, when you find these using borrow. Also, I should point out that for every new version of borrow which comes out, I do provide a list of the changes that have been made in the news. And you can check this using the news function. I don't actually think many people know about this, and so at the risk of annoying everyone out there, I've now put a message stating to check the latest news every time you load the Borrel package. Of course, this is just for those who have recently updated Borrel. Otherwise, if you are thoroughly peeved off by such startup messages, then you are free to email your complaint to complaints at majorfirstworldproblems.com. So that's it from me. Thanks for listening to this second rant. To finish off on a more serious note, I would sincerely like to thank everyone who has used and or provided feedback on Borrel. You ecologists, or you ecologists are pretty awesome for putting up with all the bugs and quirks of Borel, and I do hope that the package does help you in some little way with your analysis. Borel was just a little baby that decided to give birth to during my PhD for some fun, and I never would have imagined it would have such a half-decent uptake as it seems to have now. And so as long as people continue to want to use it, or actually do continue to use it, then I'll continue to nurture and grow the Borel baby. Well, until it becomes so whiny and annoying that I kick it in the face and leave it to fend for itself. So until next time... Francis out.